Fan F2 is go on the streets of Monaco. Poor getaway from the front row for Victor Martins. He's lost so many places. He's so slow off the line. Richard Bashaw holds the lead. He's got Hadjar in second place as Martins' chance of a first podium of the season literally disappears in the opening metres of the race. It's for sure. Then we find ourselves with Hadjar. Then it's Aaron up to P3. A horrible getaway from the French driver who is looking for a change in fortune. That's a wide moment there. That's going to be very, very close for Zane Maloney, who's alongside Victor Martins. That's how far he has fallen down the order. His chances of victory fading as they all try to make it around the hairpin for the first time. That would be a brave move. Oh, that's super close. Can he get there? Oh, he can. That was stunning stuff to force his way by. I think that was Bortoletto, who was able to get past Halger around the outside. Great move there. It was Bortoletto, who took the long way round of the hairpin as a car involved in the barrier in the background. It was Bortoletto, who was able to clear him. Exquisite stuff at the hairpin. Did that car continue? That's a bold move to the inside. Nicely done. So Maloney had his first retirement of the season yesterday as he ventures out onto the circuit and he's going to have to chop across. This is the difference between tyres that are up to temperature and tyres that are cold, and Pepe Marti takes the place. Break it down. I'm breaking down, guys. Breaking down over the radio, Richard Vashore. Is he? Yes. yes. Oh, Richard Vashore on the radio. It's going to be heartbreaking Monaco. His leaders expired. The Dutch driver is reporting a problem with the car. He jumps over the chicane, desperately hoping that it will rectify the situation. Looks like he's recovered speed here. And I wonder if something momentarily overheated there for Vashore and the car uh, has put itself in a limp mode momentarily. But, it, but he looked like he jumped across the chicane. And that, for me, looks for all the world like racing speed for Vashore. Antonelli and Behrman, oh, they're nearly making contact into Massonet. The two teammates, Antonelli scrambling for track position, trying to get the tyres into the window. This is the last corner. Oh, it's super close. I've never seen a car go so tight to the wall and try and find their way by. Still they fight, corner after corner. These two drivers bound for Formula One, and Behrman gets by. And I thought Antonelli had done enough, but Behrman trying the up, trying the under, and getting the place. Still many drivers behind, but it's for sure keeping track position against Hadjar. No! Through goes Hadjar, down to Sandovot, and that could be the race lead. And that tiny hesitation on the left front, it's Aaron down to the outside of the Nouveau Chicane, who's got the move done, has he? Oh, for sure doesn't want to give it up. They're both off the road. Aaron feathers out the throttle. It's got to be an issue for Vashore. It wouldn't be tyre temperature at this stage. It wouldn't be this easy to overtake such an experienced driver. And it all allows Hajar to scramble down the road. And Aaron gets by. It has to be an issue for Vashore. He would not be, uh, be overtaken in that oh. way. At this time, my word, that was close between Vashore and Behrman as they went through Beau Rivage. This is Massonet corner, and it's heartbreak for Richard Vashore. His chances of victory slipping through his fingers. Just a loss of power for Vashore. Hadjar blasts by uh, in a straight line. You can see the difference then. Behrman to the outside and Behrman through. Oliver Behrman takes a position that could be for the podium later on. You have to feel for Richard Vashore. He did everything right but his car is expiring underneath him. Through goes the next taker. Colapinto is able to get by. Hadjar, the leader of those who have stopped. Then Aaron, then Behrman. Well, well driven, Richard Vashore. Great first into the race, not to be your day, but he always has that pole position. He wanted the win. Sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. The door, oh, who nipped through? Antonelli! Antonelli was fighting for it, and that has created a brawl behind. He's waited so long to try and make the pass, but now he's under pressure himself. The Italian driver gets through, Bortoletto gets by as well, and Antonelli is finally past Colapinto. Antonelli getting by, and Bortoletto as well. That is going to be more contact for Taylor Barnard. This time it's with Colapinto. Still they go side by side. Patience is running out here. He's off. He's off. I think he had a puncher. 
It's uh, into the pits comes O'Sullivan. He can wait no longer at the moment. And there's no intervention. Oh, now the virtual safety car comes out, but he came into the pits. Yeah, he's made it in. There's no shutting the pit lane. He made it in before the virtual safety car. So critical for O'Sullivan. If he makes it past that first safety car line and into the pits uh, before the virtual safety car is called, this is a fair pit stop. This and counts. The, and the question is, where does he come out, Alex? Where Absolute, does he come out? We're absolutely extraordinary. Has O'Sullivan got the track position? He has. He has. That is absolutely incredible. Oh. And this is the reason why Maloney into the side of Dirksen. Yeah, well, just coming out, back out onto the racing line there, Dirksen. He needs to be more aware than that. Just joins the racing line and wipes Maloney out. Man, are you choking? Are you choking? Yeah, that's uh, Monaco. That's Monaco. No, I could have covered that jump, man. Come on. Hadjar can't believe what has happened in front of him. O'Sullivan ticking off the corners. ART gambled. They had no chance unless someone made contact, but they did on the way up the hill to Massonet Corner. They rolled the dice. It's come up with O'Sullivan's number. He's number two on the car. He's number one on the road. What an extraordinary finish for Formula Two. O'Sullivan wins for the first time in Formula Two. He denies Hadjar with the audacious strategy that needed a little bit of luck, but ART called it. When you gamble and gamble and win, that's racing. And that's especially racing here. O'Sullivan made it happen. <laughs> Zach O'Sullivan staying out, hoping for an intervention. He got one. Timing of the virtual safety car crucial. Hadjar in second. Paul Aaron, the new championship leader. Oliver Behrman went from 12th on the grid to 4th. Zach O'Sullivan started 15th. It is surely one of his greatest ever days. Zach O'Sullivan, the runner-up in the Formula 3 championship last year to Gabriel Bortoletto, the winner in Monaco and the Campos team making a huge noise.